Greetings and welcome back to our series, The Three Angels' Messages Made Simple. Thank you once again for joining us in this section of The Three Angels' Message. At the moment, we are going through what it means to give glory to God. But now we are in our final practical pointer in this section on how to give glory to God, how it is attained. But if you have not watched the first two parts, please go and watch it, for it sets the understanding of what it means to give glory to God. Because as of right now, we are going to study how everything we've learned is attained in our lives. And with that said, let's now head into the final practical pointer, the glory attained. Point number one, God's glory, God's work. Now, when I look at this standard, when I look at God's law, and when I look at the character of God, I have to repeat the same words as Paul said in the book of Romans chapter 7. For he knew that there was a part of himself that just did not want to do what was right, though knowing the degradation it can cause in his own soul. For I know that in me, that is my flesh, dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not, or I don't know. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more that I do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Then Paul exclaims in verse 24, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? You see friends, we have all gone through this or even going through this even now. For me, I could personally see how I messed up the plans of God, the plans that he had for me in order that he may be glorified through me, which is ultimately what he wants. I see such weakness in myself and sadness at times. And for you listening, you may have felt this or are feeling this even now. But this is where we need to rely on God, for this is His work. He is the one who can purify if we allow Him to do so. Therefore, we are buried with Him by baptism into death, that as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Jesus also exclaims, If thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. And so friends, I am so happy for these promises because I personally get encouraged by God's words. Now if you felt discouraged, I want to remind you that it is only the devil trying to remind you of all of your sins, all of your failures. He just wants to fill you with himself because the Bible says, but he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. Our God understands, my friends. He knows the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And so based upon this, we must understand why it is God who does the work in us as we let him. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ. Point number two, faith gives glory to God. Now at times a lot of thoughts and questions come to my mind such as, 
Why do you need to worry if you know that you are living by the glory of God? When you receive blessings in your life, for example, it is for the purpose of God's glory. And friend, based on what I've studied, there is nothing that gives God joy than to know and see that his people are blessed, happy and filled with his glory. But during the period of your life and my life, at times there are tests that advance at every point as we studied in Fear God with Abraham and Job. But obviously these are to show us our character flaws for us to then give to Jesus to be purified and for him to give us his character of patience and endurance. And to be real friends, these opportunities where God's glory ought to be revealed could be in the form of sickness or even death. And when Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death but for the glory of God, that the Son of Man might be glorified thereby. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither have this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be manifest in him. And Paul, whom the Lord stated as his instrument of the gospel, understood that he would have to go through immense hardship, trials and persecutions for the glory of God. But instead of losing his faith like some of us, or frets like many of us do as well, he said one of the most famous verses used by believers or even unbelievers. Not that I speak in respect of want. For I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Friends, in all things that we go through, we don't need to worry about the situation. God has it covered. I must live by that faith that my life is a testament of his glory, come what may. Paul talking about Abraham gave us a very powerful verse. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and therefore faith gives glory to God. Point number three, repentance gives glory to God. Now a way in which this is seen is in the way God cleanses us from all our sins. Notice, help us O God of our salvation for the glory of thy name and deliver us and purge away our sins for thy name's sake, or as we studied in Exodus 33, for thy glory's sake. So we know that it glorifies God when he knows that he can forgive us of all our sins. Why? Because again he wants to use us to fulfill his glory. And also because it says in Romans chapter 3 verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of his glory. Now knowing that this is an experience and the glory of God is his character, I want you to notice how everything that we just mentioned comes up in Romans chapter 5 verse 1 to 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, which is the character of God, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. So friends, based upon this powerful message, this simply means that our hope is fixated on him 
to give us the ability to give him glory. No matter how weak or sinful you think you are, the result of God wants to bring us to the end. The start is never easy indeed, but there is a promise of a finish if you allow him to take us through. But how does that work? Notice. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. It is purely by the work of the Holy Spirit that this manifestation of God's glory can be accomplished. When the Spirit reminds you of the glory of God seen in this study today, it is imperative to listen, for the Spirit's access is stronger by every choice we make when we follow Him. But it is also weakened by every choice that neglects Him. A strong message was given in the book of Hebrews as a message of mercy to remind us and a warning if we should neglect the lesson. Wherefore, as the Holy Spirit saith today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years, Wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always err in their hearts, and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. And so, like I said, friends, it is important to know this. For by knowing, we will fulfill the glory of God, if applied. Now, our last practical pointer is point four, the glory in creation. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. The psalmist expresses that creation, the works of God, and nature in its beauty manifests God's glory. Now, since working in the city, it has been such a drag on my life personally, and I found myself working to the point of neglecting precious time with the Lord, and that caused me to fall into deep depression. It caused characteristics to rise which I never thought would rise in me, like irritation, lack of compassion and understanding, intemperance, impatience, anger and self-centeredness. This was the result of my life because I was so caught up in the city and all the things that kept me in such a distracted state of mind. Now I read a truly Holy Spirit inspired book called Country Living, which I understood was imperative to know, especially in the times that we are living in. And one of the essential points in this inspired book was to leave the crowded cities to prepare for the time of trouble which we spoke about in the series from Daniel to the Sunday Law, and what we are going to continue to express in the third angel's message in this series. Another reason is also because character building would not only be easier, but it would also be practical in every situation and circumstance while you are in the country, and mainly for you not to be bombarded with the character of Satan everywhere you go. For everywhere you go in the city, you see nothing but billboards. You see people displaying certain characteristics on their body which you should not be seeing, especially your children, and so on. The Bible expresses also in principle this verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 8. By beholding, we become changed. And so this is also why God told the children of Israel while entering Canaan to destroy the nations that were going against God's ways of righteousness, for they will be a snare or they will be, quote unquote, a distraction, but they did not listen. Wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their gods shall be a snare unto you. And it came to pass when the angel of the Lord spake these words unto the children of Israel, 
that the people lifted up their voice and wept. But personally, in choosing to leave the cities into a rural area, God has blessed me and my family where we can constantly be surrounded with scenes of nature, learn of his creative works and witness what God says that his glory will be revealed in us when we see the manifestation of the glory of God in creation. Now I will be making a video on my move from the cities into the country as well as the blessing that the Lord has bestowed upon me and my family very soon. Please pray for this and please also inbox me if you would like to know more information. But in the meantime, I have uploaded other videos which you can go through where people have shared their testimonies and even individuals who have helped me make my move through their experience and their faith. Now if you're watching this on YouTube, the links will be in the description box below or you can search the title of these videos on the screen. And so friends, we come to the end of this section, give glory to God. But like I said, this is just scratching the surface because the amount of information that I can share can go on and on. But I do pray that you've understood these points in this section, give glory to God. Giving glory to God has never been something to make us dreary or weary. It is always and will always be a blessing in our lives. For if we follow God's plan of giving glory to him in our lives, in our health, in our communications, in every area of our lives, we will not only give glory to God, but we will experience the blessing that he originally wanted to give us. The Bible tells us, Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that ordereth his conversation aright will I show the salvation of of God and so when you achieve this experience praising glorifies God because you have come to the realization that the glory of God not only blesses the world but it blesses your life holistically simply because God loves us thank you very much for watching this and I pray that you have understood and please be prepared for the next phase of our study on the three angels messages made simple the hour of his judgment has come. God bless you and see you in the next part as we continue our series, The Three Angels' Messages Made Simple. Bye for now.